Okay, everyone, welcome back. Today is day 29 of the 30 Day Profit Challenge. Yes, we are one more day to go after today. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate you being here. We've got uh, one more day today after today to wrap things up. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to take a bit of a step back and do a journey through the profit litmus test over the last 29 days and kind of just recap all of the things that we've learned about along the way in terms of understanding the profit litmus test and the sort of four key pillars that would be related to understanding profit for your e-commerce business. So with that, I'm going to dive right into it. All right, so as we talked about, we're talking about the total profit limits test, day 29. And again, we're recapping the last 29 days of the 30 day challenge. You know, first of all, I just wanna thank you for being here and honor you for being through this challenge with me all along the way. You know, it's been 29 days of a lot of early mornings for me, but also hopefully some good mornings for you where you're getting some good insights and be getting some good inspiration around how to undercover little pockets and hopefully nuggets of gold in terms of profit for your e-commerce business. So, you know, what we looked at over the last several days is we've been going through what I would like to call my profit litmus test. And really it's a test to understand where does the profit come from in your e-commerce business? And so what we've been doing is we've kind of been stepping it through a framework of a four sort of key pillars. The first one being your product margin. Your product margin is, again, remember to thinking about that as anything related to the pricing, to the products, to what you're actually selling in terms of your e-commerce business. The second is your order margin. And your order margin would be anything related to things like returns, things like shipping, things like payment processing, discounts, all those things that would basically be a part of your business that are tied to that individual order or that are variables, we like to call it, of uh, order on your e-commerce business. Then we looked at uh, customer margin the last couple of days. And uh, what the customer margin is, is basically customer margin would be anything related to your customers from the lifetime value all the way through to the cost per acquisition and everything in between in terms of how do we calculate those two different parts of the equation. So you've got lifetime value and cost per acquisition. And we'll get through kind of recapping what that looked like. And then finally we had our conversion margin. And the conversion margin would be your conversion funnel in terms of how the steps people take to go from being a visitor through to being a buyer, from a buyer to a spender, from a spender to becoming an actual customer. And we looked at how you can optimize that conversion funnel within each of these steps. So let's just kind of do a quick walkthrough and recap of what each of these steps look like, starting with the product margin tree. So if you recall, the product margin tree was basically what we talked about before. We took this sort of mock order on the left-hand side, and we used that as a reference point for us to understand you know, how do we understand the product margin tree? So we had a product that sold for $100 list price. It had a discount of $20. And when then we're taking that away, we had $100 left over as the product revenue, but adding that taxes and shipping to get a total gross revenue, $114.95 charged to the customer. And so used in that scenario, we were able then to go through and understand the product margin tree. So we took an example of a million dollars in sales revenue we broke that down further between an average order value of $250. And if you multiplied that 250 times 4,000, you would get the million dollars sales revenue. So using that 4,000 orders and that 250 average order value, we were then further able to break things down a little bit further into what your average unit revenue would be. And again, that average unit revenue is what is actually sold on that particular product. And that ties back to our order we had of $100. But what it also looks at is the units per order in terms of, you know, if you took your $250 average order value and your average unit revenue of $100, dividing those two, you would get a 2.5 units per order. Or similarly, if we sold 10,000 units over here and a 10,000 units sold, dividing that by 4,000, you're going to get a units per order of 2.5. And so we use that to understand unit quantity and understanding, well, we can sell so many units and the more units that we sell on a per order basis, will get net us more sales revenue at the top line. And then what we also looked at is we looked at the cost of goods sold on a particular product and what that individual product margin would look like. So let's say you are retailing a product for $100. It's costing you $25 in your cost of goods sold or what it would cost to manufacture that product. So your product margin would be $75 in that particular unit. And so overall, if we take our cost of goods sold times our unit sold, we're gonna get to a total cost of goods sold 
in this equation. And then taking total cost of goods sold over total sales revenue, we end up with our total product margin for the business. And so this just gives you a snapshot of how you can link about your product margin tree just by simply thinking about the products that you're selling and how much you're selling them for versus how much it's costing you in terms of your business. So looking at your average unit revenue and your cost of goods sold will yield you what your product margin looks like. But then what you can also figure out is, is if I can sell more units of those particular products on a units per order basis, not only will that increase my average order value, that's gonna increase the overall top line sales revenue without even having to touch your orders at all. So in a nutshell, there's your product margin formula. Next, we went on and looked at the order margin tree. And so using that same sort of order example on the left-hand side, what we're able to do is talk a bit about more your gross sales revenue. So this is what is charged to the customer versus your product sales revenue, which is what actually you make in terms of the product itself from your actual margin on your products itself. Now, we also had to take a look at what orders look like in this equation. And so from there, what we did is we calculated all the different things that were related to your cost of doing business. So we looked at your e-commerce platform costs. Your e-commerce platform costs would have been things like if you had a platform like Shopify or Klaviyo for your email marketing, or perhaps a order management system like ShipStation to manage your orders and handle your orders. There is some cost of doing business just by simply looking at the price of the software to do that. Now, obviously $500 to $1,000 of software is, think about that would be if you were operating a bricks and mortar store, if you had to pay rent or you had to pay leasehold to keep a store up and running. So it's the kind of similar analogy there that it's what you would cost to doing business just to be able to take orders in the first place. Then we looked at what you, the second to that, we looked at what your pick, pack and ship costs would look like. And so pick, pack and ship costs would be, as obviously you can't physically have a storefront where people can come in and pick up the orders from you, you need to be able to send them to you, to someone. And so by doing that, by sending your customers out the packages, there's a certain cost involved with shipping. And we looked at what the shipping margin could be in terms of what you're charging the customer or maybe not charging the customer versus what you still have to pay at the end of the day in order to send out that package to the customer. And we looked at ways that you can optimize the shipping margin in there by maybe offering shipping or not, or maybe offering ways to negotiate better prices with your suppliers, or maybe just looking at how you're shipping out products in terms of the batching and the processes. So we've looked at a few different ways that you could save on your shipping costs there. Next, we looked at payment processing. And so payment processing breaks down into two functions. It's got two different rates. One of them that's tied to the amount of gross revenue that you do, as well as the payment processing of the actual orders themselves. And so based on the orders that are generated, what it'll do is it'll calculate a percentage of the revenue plus a dollar figure for each of the individual orders. And that'll net you a payment processing fee. So we looked at a few different scenarios there where you could save on your payment processing fees by either selecting different plans that are available to you, whether they're through Shopify or through other providers. Um, obviously, Shopify is, is one provider that I recommend a lot, but uh, it's not necessarily the only platform that you can use for doing payment processing or even just for doing e-commerce in general, but it's just one I like to refer to a lot, so just a caveat there. I'm not paid by Shopify by any means, it's just more one I like to use and work with a lot, very, very, uh, with a lot of merchants because it's, it's just very easy to use and uh, it offers you a lot of just uh, good product features. Now, from there, we looked at your returns policy and we looked at returns and we thought about, well, if returns are something that's a nature part of the business, it's become the new normal. How do we figure out ways to make returns part of the process, but uh, how do we reduce the return process? So we looked at a few different options there of how we could return or reduce the return process. And then finally we looked at discounts and we looked at the perceived value of what discounts look like for customers. Obviously discounts are something that some people, uh, you know, love them or hate them, they're here to stay, I think, for the foreseeable future. And so how do we take perceived value and flip it on its head a little bit and for your customers, help them understand what an actual discount looks like in their mind, but actually what the perceived value might be that it's actually not costing you as much in your business and sacrificing margin along the way. So if we took all of those different, what we call order variable costs, we can combine those to generate what we call our total order margin, which is looking at our sales revenue, to subtracting all these different costs to get to total order margin formula. 
So that's the total order margin formula. Now next we looked at the conversion funnel. And with the conversion funnel, we looked at a few different ways that you can optimize the conversion funnel by staking, dipping it down into individual steps. So we looked at the pages on your website and how those connect to places in the stage of where the customer is in the conversion funnel. So if we looked at all pages, for example, people are coming into your website and becoming a visitor. Once they've become a visitor, you would hope that they start seeing some product and they become an active shopper and they're starting to browse around by different products. So if whether they reach a category page or maybe a search results page, they're starting to browse around products, but they haven't really picked something up yet or ready to touch the products themselves. And so we talked about what that conversion rate might look like between visitors to browsers is something where they've seen a product and you know they've reached the site but seen a product and that being around 50%. But until they've actually physically picked up a product or actually visited a product detail page, that's when we would count them as a true shopper. And so that browser to shopper rate we would think about is probably in that 50% range would be an easy benchmark to shoot for. And then from there, once they become a shopper, what we want to do is actually, actually they have them add stuff to their cart and become an active buyer, meaning that they're ready to buy something from you, ready to put down their credit card, hopefully, and complete the purchase. And so again, we're talking about a similar 50% conversion rate there of people that view products to adding them to your cart. Now, what we're trying to do with these conversion rates, by the way, on the right-hand side, is if we start adding it all up, we want to get to what Amazon would count is a 3% conversion rate from top to bottom of your overall conversion rate of your, of your e-commerce funnel. And we looked at a few examples or a few scenarios where you know, there's, there's different varying different types of merchants out there that have different conversion rates. But overall, 3% is a good healthy number that you want to be shooting for. And that's kind of the, the aspirational benchmark that most people look when they talk about Amazon's conversion rates. That's what they're kind of sitting in from most research that's shown. So anyways, I digress a little tangent there. But looking at buyers, so buyers, we wanna get them to become spenders and then we want them to reach that checkout phase where they're ready to put down their credit card. And so that, again, we are looking at a 50% conversion rate between add to card and checkout to get them to become a spender. And then finally, those customers reach the final step of the confirmation page to become a customer. And so what we wanna be sure is that from top to bottom, we're getting to that 3% conversion rate of an overall e-commerce funnel. So that in a nutshell is your conversion margin formula. So finally, over the last few days, we've talked about your customer margin tree. And with the customer margin tree, what we looked at is we looked at two sides of the equation from your sales revenue. On the one side, we looked at revenue per customer. And obviously, if we can get more revenue out of per customer basis, that's going to generate more sales for you and more revenue at the top line without even having to touch your customers on the other side of the equation. To do that, you would look at increasing your number of orders and or increasing your average order value or what we would call the monetary value in the RFM model, or you would look at orders per customer in terms of the frequency in getting people to come back more and more from you. So from there, those two combined net you out your customer lifetime value. We also looked on the right-hand side of the equation, we looked at customers, and again with customers, those can break down to the recency of them, whether they've been a first-time customer or they become a repeat customer, Within the first time customers, we looked at paid versus earned customers. And with those paid versus earned customers, what we tried to understand is, you know, there may be different channels or different ways that those people are coming in and how do we pay for them versus how do we maybe earn their trust to come in and buy from us. And then finally we had from there, how much spend is required to potentially pay for those customers to come in the door. So on a similar basis, we looked at the repeat customers and how they become paid versus earned. And as well, what the repeat customer spend would look like if we had to pay for some of those customers coming in the door. So long story short, we looked at those two combined to come up with a, what we call a cost per acquisition. And that cost per acquisition would be taking your total spend over both first time and repeat, dividing that over your total customers to arrive at a cost per acquisition. Now to get to that customer margin formula, we would take your customer lifetime value subtracted from your cost per acquisition to finally arrive at your margin per customer. And that, in a nutshell, would take you to your customer margin tree. So that kind of sums up all four of the pillars that we had in our sort of profit litmus test. And I hopefully that this has given you a good oversight or good overview into uncovering some ideas around, you know, what some other opportunities or what are some other pockets of profit or revenue that I haven't thought about in terms of generating more e-commerce business. So with that, I want to thank you for being here. And as part of the challenge, I mentioned this at the top, 
But I wanted to offer up a, a private coaching session for, you know, sort of the top three people that were participating in the webinars. Well, guess what? I want to open that coaching session up to everyone. And so what I've done is I've had everyone that's come in and I've been obviously tracking attendance. Obviously, those that have been here every day, I really appreciate it being here. But I've also recognized it's been a challenge for some to maybe make it every single day, whether it's getting up in the morning or you had other commitments and whatnot. So I do want to make the participation ward available for everyone. And so what I ask you to do is if you are interested in kind of talking further, if you found some value in these sessions and you know, you want to go a little bit deeper with your business, then what I ask you to do is visit the URL I've got up on the screen. It's blairdejong.com slash coaching. And it's a, it, there's an application form that you can fill out and fill in your details. And then from there, what we'll do is we'll look to arrange a call where we can get on the phone and do a coaching session. And so you're asking, well, well why do you, why do you, why do you want to do coaching there? What, what's going on? Well, I really thought that over the last few days, if you added it up, we've done about five hours worth of content over the last 30 days. And, you know, I feel like that the five hours is just getting started. It's just the tip of the iceberg. And so I want to be able to offer more opportunity for people to pick my brain, but also opportunities for you if you're struggling in your e-commerce business, or perhaps you're just getting started and you're kind of figuring out, well, what do I do to get going? Or perhaps you've got some revenue and now you want to go deeper on discounting, or maybe you want to go deeper on the customer margin formula, or maybe you want to go deeper on your conversion formula. Whatever that might be, I want to make myself available to you so that you can figure out what's the best route forward for your e-commerce business. And we can work on that together. So when you get a second, please go and visit blairdejong.com slash coaching and fill out the application form and I'll take your application and, you know, with all sincerity, really want to help you succeed in your e-commerce business. So this is why I've set up this coaching program for you going forward. So with that, we've got one more lesson to go tomorrow. And what I'm going to do is I've got a special bonus that I've been working on to kind of summarize all the profit litmus tests and put that together in one big package for you. And so with that, tomorrow we'll go through the bonus. It's going to be a worksheet. So I'm giving you some caution. It's a bit of numbers in there, but I'm sure that all these numbers we've talked about will be very beneficial for you to get to know your e-commerce business and for you to grow more profit. So with that, I thank you for today. I thank you for being here and I thank you for being part of this challenge. It's been 29 days of awesomeness. And I'm really excited to kind of finish off strong tomorrow with the last 30 day of our 30th challenge. So with that, I thank you for being here and really ask you today to go out and be present, connect with others and make an impact in someone's life. Thanks for watching. And I will now pause the recording and take any questions.